I, I was a counselor for, for eight, nine, ten-year-olds, and um, they had a discussion section with one, with one of the uh, Israeli teachers at the camp. And, um, they, I, you know, she, she laid out the same story as the one that I grew up with hearing, and now I'm hearing it and I'm a little bit older, and I was just sort of like horrified. I was sort of like, I would started thinking and I was like, hmm, if this is what, this is what we're doing here in this Jewish camp, like, what are they doing, you know, what are they doing in the West Bank right now in terms of teaching their children what's going on with Israel, you know? And, and if that's what the situation is, then when does it end? I don't think I ever went through a change. In other words, I don't think I ever went from being, you know, this to what? Uh, I was always like, well, okay, but really, wait, what? I just don't get it. And I still, to a certain extent, uh, what drives my uh, relationship to the topic of Israel and Palestine is still more or less confusion. It's more like, wait a second, you, you, just, you, you really did just say that the Balfour Declaration is somehow this binding document that gives you the right to do that? That's really weird, like some anti-Semitic bureaucrat, uh, this crumbling empire writes a letter to somebody and says something like a Jewish home and like, uh, what? I was encountering critiques of Israel that were parallel to the critiques of the United States that I was also encountering for the first time. Then in 1982, when Israel invaded Lebanon, going after the, the PLO, invaded Beirut, and then in the fall of 82, I think it was, the Sabran Shatila massacre, and that really blew open my thinking in a big way. It, it was the first time I really recognized and thought about Israel as an aggressor and not just a defender. Not to say that there wasn't rhetoric and even justification, arguably, for response to PLO incursions from the north, but still, the going into Beirut, I mean, going into civilian populations, you know, bombing a city. I think things really only started heating up uh, kind of in the 70s uh, and then in the early 80s, especially with the, uh, the, the major incursion into Lebanon and the Sabra Shatila. And by that point, uh, it was very easy to, for me at least, to shed uh, what little there was of the kind of right or wrong uh, aspect of it. I thought a lot about Israel in the same, as an American, in the same way that I thought about what we were funding in Latin America. We were funding what was happening in Israel, and, and I felt I had the right and the obligation to speak out about it and to demonstrate and so on, specifically as an American. So I grew up in New York City, I think predominantly, and New York City is, you know, there's racism, but it's not that kind of racism, you know. It's not segregation anymore. So um, in Israel, you really witness that kind of segregation. And I would just notice things like I'd look around and I'd see a sign that said, uh, you know, don't even think about looking at a Jewish woman, Arab, you know, like written in metal, just like a street sign. It is the case that only Jews have full rights of citizenship. And even Palestinian Israelis who were granted citizenship after 48 and then the Land Distribution Acts of 53 um, were given some rights. But what's absolutely clear is that if there's a shortage in housing, a Jew will get housing before a Palestinian. If there's a shortage in employment, a Jew will get employment before a Palestinian. If there are only a few places in the university, they will go to Jews before they will go to Palestinians. As American Jews, um, we're taught to really value uh, democracy and openness and um, a sort of a sort of cosmopolitanism um, that allows for all kinds of people to live together and be respected. And this is what American Jews rely on for safety and, um, and success in, in this society. So it feels like a contradiction um, when we're told 
over and over again. Um, you know, the Palestinians are dangerous. We can't share a state with them. We can't um, allow a right of return. Um, and the, the, these are the more complex questions that don't get addressed. I'm a Jew, but I don't support um, this kind. I don't support what happened in Gaza. I don't believe that any war that results in a 1300 to 1 kill ratio can conceivably be anything other than, you know, a, a criminal uh, event. Um, and, and I won't, I won't, something's terribly wrong here and, and Israel has much to account for in this. And, uh, and you know, you're told immediately, if you say this, you're going to contribute to uh, a scenario where eventually Israel will be destroyed by its enemies. And this is bullshit. And you have to believe that it's bullshit, uh, that my country, right or wrong, is, you know, is, is, a, is a foul kind of patriotism that's guaranteed to destroy your country. I remember when I was a very little kid, a rabbi came to uh, Temple Sinai. Uh, I was about six years old. Uh, to talk to us about the Victory Forest Fund in Israel. They were, we were supposed to get little sadaka boxes and run around getting nickels from people to uh, send to Israel to build, uh, to plant trees for Victory Forest. And some kid in this Sunday school said, well, what are the trees for? And this very old rabbi with a very thick German accent said, well, they're so that when the Nazis come, the Jews can climb up in the trees and hide. And I, you know that seemed sort of crazy to me, and it stayed as a kind of a of, of an image. It was like my favorite part of Hebrew school was the feeling of virtue when I came in with my little tzedakah box with all these coins that I knew that I had collected, and that they were going to plant trees in the desert and make the desert bloom. <laughs> An international campaign against the JNF's discriminatory practices led to a member of its Washington, D.C. board to quit last week. Writing in the foreword, the board member Seth Morrison says, Some of my earliest Jewish memories involve dropping spare change in the Jewish National Fund's iconic little blue boxes. I was proud that my money would help plant trees in Israel. The JNF, I knew, was making the desert bloom. <laughs> שם היה ממוקם הבית שלי, פה הבית של ג'ומעה ואחרים, שם הבית של סמעין, לידו הבית של סייח, לידו הבית של סלים. אם היינו יהודים, היו, הייתה המדינה והמדינה נותנים לנו צלשים שאנחנו מפריחים את הנגב. אבל אנחנו ערבים, מה לעשות? 